Hello, and welcome to How to Conduct a Tabletop Exercise at Your Institution, a tutorial for administrators and crisis response team members. Today, we will walk you through an eight-step process for planning and executing an effective tabletop exercise. Tabletop exercises provide a valuable way to test your crisis response plan. With the tabletop exercise, you have the option to test the entire plan or just a portion of it. You can announce the exercise in advance to build knowledge and experience or conduct unannounced exercises with skilled teams to assess their readiness. Practicing your plan provides greater familiarity that allows a smoother execution when needed. Why test? It will help individuals become more knowledgeable about your institution's plan, identify gaps in the plan, improve communication between crisis response team members and other campus stakeholders. And finally, by practicing your plan in different scenarios, you will learn not only new, but potentially better ways to execute it. While tabletop exercises can be used to test a variety of crises, our focus today is on the crises within. Issues arising from the escalation of administrative, operational, managerial, or facilities problems. Examples may range from a bed bug infestation, to misappropriation of funds, to sexual misconduct between a coach and an athlete. Let's explore the eight steps. First, it is important to set objectives for the exercise. An average tabletop exercise will have between three and eight objectives. These might include determining the effectiveness of your institution's plans, policies, and procedures, identifying the level of cooperation between departments, determining your institution's ability to provide timely and accurate information to the necessary audiences, evaluating the adequacy of resources, such as facilities and equipment, and increasing awareness of crisis response procedures and identifying training needs. The next step is selecting a scenario. An effective tabletop scenario should be realistic, engaging to participants, and aligned to meet the predetermined objectives. When identifying a likely crisis, consider factors such as risks specific to your geographical area, such as a severe weather event that could shut down power to research labs, mission-specific risks, such as a sudden loss of the IT infrastructure during finals week, and issues that could generate negative publicity, such as allegations of sexual misconduct by an employee. Next, determine which campus locations could be affected by the scenario. What time factors, such as day and month, apply? Could other factors affect the severity of the crisis, such as a key campus official being out of town? And lastly, identify which departments would be affected by and therefore are important to testing the scenario. Once you have a scenario, select the roles of those who will be involved in the exercise. First, choose a facilitator to lead the exercise, someone who is well-organized and experienced with leading a meeting or group exercise. Next, invite participants that are likely to respond or be heavily impacted by the scenario. For a scenario involving faculty misconduct, you might invite HR and the dean of the facility. For a scenario involving an unstable student, you might invite the dean of students and director of counseling. Finally, observers can be used for a larger tabletop exercise to take notes and provide feedback during the post-exercise evaluation process. Two teams that should be represented at every tabletop exercise are the executive team and the crisis response team. The executive team is there to provide policy guidance based on the situation and your crisis response plan, coordinate resources, and make decisions to support the crisis response team. It's important to decide who on the executive team needs to participate in the selected scenario. For example, if the scenario is an alleged sexual assault of a student by a coach, you may choose to include individuals who have oversight of student affairs, athletics, and administrative services. You will also need to identify which members of your crisis response team should actively manage the situation. In the event of a crisis, this team will execute all components of your institution's response. To do this, the team could establish objectives, strategies, and priorities to manage the incident, arrange for and track necessary resources and services, and collect and analyze information and maintain documentation. So if the selected scenario is an electrical malfunction that has knocked out power to your research labs, 
you may choose to include members of the crisis response team that represent facilities, purchasing, faculty, and risk management. Consider the environment and the time needed to conduct the tabletop exercise. Ensure that all participants can easily see each other, the facilitator, and any necessary materials. Divide the participants by team or department, and place any observers around the perimeter of the room. Depending on the goals of the exercise, the number of participants can range from 5 to 25 or more. When inviting participants, think about how the group size will affect room setup, the facilitator's ability to moderate, and the time needed for participants to discuss and provide feedback. For a smaller tabletop exercise, keep participants closer for ease of communication. A large conference table and chairs should be sufficient. You will need to allot at least 90 minutes for the exercise. For a larger group, you'll need to ensure that there's enough room to comfortably carry out the necessary activities. A large open space with movable tables and chairs will be more appropriate, and at least two and a half hours may be necessary. You're now ready to conduct your exercise. As you begin, provide participants with such materials as an agenda, a written copy of the scenario, a detailed map of the campus or locations important to the scenario, relevant policies or plans, pens and notepads, and a list of participants, including their role and contact information. The facilitator is responsible for setting the tone for the exercise. This can be done by managing time effectively, presenting a realistic, engaging scenario, setting and adhering to ground rules, and encouraging people to think fast. Let's watch as a facilitator kicks off a tabletop exercise. Okay, great, let's get started, guys. First, I wanna thank all of you for participating in today's tabletop exercise. As you know, exercising our crisis response plan allows us to evaluate its effectiveness, and it also gives you an opportunity to practice your response so when we do have to implement the plan, you can do so efficiently. The objectives for today are to respond to the scenario based on our crisis response plan, to identify gaps within the plan, and to identify training needs that will help you to respond better. You've all been asked to bring a copy of the most recent crisis response plan. Based on today's scenario, I'm going to ask you to turn to the sexual misconduct chapter in that plan. You've also been provided with a list of all of today's participants, as well as their role on campus. So to begin with, let's just cover some of our ground rules. Your response today should be based strictly within the parameters of our crisis response plan, as well as based on the information that you're provided with today. You may communicate with others in the room, like you would in a real emergency by way of email or telephone. Today you will do that by sending a liaison to the other tables. But as in a real scenario, please be respectful of everyone's time. This is a no fault, no blame environment. Please be respectful of and open to others' viewpoints, even though you may not necessarily agree with them. There are no observers here today, so please be very careful in taking your notes. That will be necessary when we move into the evaluation phase of today's exercise. And finally, you will be expected to think fast today, but also please be thorough with your responses. Okay, I want to give you a little bit of background to today's scenario. John Campbell, a graduate of Hallowell College and former star of the men's basketball team, moved back into town a few years ago. At that time, he met with Tim Kirsch, the women's basketball coach, and offered his services on a volunteer basis. Tim was really excited to see him. The team had been struggling over the past couple of years, and the assistant women's basketball coach had left two weeks ago unexpectedly. Tim was so excited to see John that he offered him the assistant women's basketball coach's position on the spot and told him to show up for practice the next day. Okay, let's fast forward about two and a half years and John is in his third season as the assistant coach for the women's basketball team, the last two which have been championship seasons. 
And the scenario that you will be responding to today is as follows. Late this morning, Andrea Speck, the Dean of Students, called an emergency meeting with Tom Sewell, the Director of Campus Safety, and Gus Macker, the Athletic Director. Andrea shared that Chloe Smith, a sophomore on the women's basketball team, was in her office first thing this morning. Chloe shared that John Smith had been hitting on her all last year. She had been able to avoid him until last evening when she was in the women's locker room and John cornered her and sexually assaulted her. Chloe had already been to the hospital to have a rape kit performed. She also met with the local police and was pressing charges against John for sexual assault. Before Chloe left the office, she gave Andrea an envelope which contained two news stories that she had printed from the internet just that morning. A month before John Campbell returned to Hallowell, he was terminated from the Willow Path School where he taught for 10 years. The termination occurred after an investigation for sexual assault against three female students there. At this point, the attendees of this meeting decided it was important to call an emergency meeting of the executive team, the crisis response team, campus safety, and communications. This is why you've all been called here today. Please discuss with your teams your initial response based strictly on the information that I've just provided for you and within the parameters of our current policies and procedures. Toward the end of the discussion for each part of the exercise, the facilitator can use checkpoints to allow teams to check their progress by sharing the basics of what they've discussed in contemplation of their next steps. Let's take a look at a sample checkpoint. Okay, if I can have everyone's attention, please, let's check in and see where we all are. Um, crisis response team, can you summarize what you've been working on up to this point? Yes, our director of counseling is working with his team to determine the needs of other potentially affected individuals, uh, which at this point is only Chloe. Um, but we believe it's important to be prepared in case we need to expand counseling services to others as the incident breaks. Our risk manager is in contact with our insurance carrier to look at our coverage uh, and benefits for this type of incident. And I have a meeting this afternoon with our Title IX coordinator since legally we're required to investigate Chloe's sexual assault claim. And lastly, our director of HR has contacted our EAP provider to determine what services we can make available to other employees who may need to discuss this incident with someone. Great, wonderful. Um, let's hear from Campus Safety. Tell us what you're working on. Sure. We've contacted the local police department to obtain a copy of the report made by Chloe this morning. I'll be meeting with the Chief of Police and District Attorney tomorrow morning to discuss their plan of action and any potential coordination with them. We've also contacted the headmaster at Willow Pass School regarding their investigation of Mr. Campbell, and our Assistant Director of Safety will be meeting with him tomorrow. Wonderful. And communications, what do we have so far? We're really in a holding pattern here. It's, we know there's allegations of a sexual assault against John Campbell by students here as well as at Willow Path. But there's not much we can do at this point without some more specific details. Okay, let's continue our discussions at our table. As you noticed, this time was used only as a report out of activities. If participants believe something was overlooked or not carried out adequately, rather than disrupt the exercise, the facilitator asks participants to make a note of it. Perhaps someone in the room felt that communications could be doing more, maybe preparing correspondence to be sent to parents of other members of the women's basketball team, or contacting a PR firm to discuss action steps with the media. Those discussions will occur during the evaluation phase of the exercise. In an actual crisis, new information surfaces. In a tabletop exercise, this new information is presented to participants in the form of injects. Injects are new information that expand the scenario. They're strategically placed throughout the exercise to test the participants' ability to adapt their response. A typical sequence of a tabletop exercise is scenario, discussion, checkpoint, inject, discussion, checkpoint. The exercise will continue in this way until all injects have been revealed. 
There are generally four to five injects for each scenario. Let's check back in with our exercise participants to see an example of an inject. Okay, if I can have everyone's attention, please. We have some new information that has just come to light. Andrea Speck, the Dean of Students, just received word from Tina Lee, her Assistant Dean of Students, that Jenny, a senior member of the women's basketball team, showed up at her office hysterically crying. Jenny told Tina that she just heard what happened to Chloe and needed to talk to someone. Jenny shared that John Campbell forced her to have sex with him in December of his first year back at Hallowell. At that time, he threatened to speak with the head coach and have her benched if she refused. Jenny feels guilty that she didn't warn others on the team at that time. She now feels somehow responsible for what happened to Chloe. She said that everyone on campus needs to know about John, who she feels is a predator. And if the school isn't willing to make sure that happens by the end of today, then she will take it upon herself to make sure that the school is aware. So please proceed with discussing the institution's response, taking this new information into account. The facilitator should conduct a post-exercise evaluation at the conclusion of the tabletop exercise. Participants and observers should discuss what worked well, what did not work well, and what areas in the plan or process need improvement. If participants think a team could have used a different approach or taken steps they didn't think about during the earlier discussion, this is the time for those discussions. Comprehensive notes should be taken during the evaluation. Regardless of the scope of the tabletop exercise, it's important to synthesize the information gained. This is generally done in the form of a report written by the crisis response team to include a summary of the objectives and the exercise itself, and recommendations from the debrief and evaluation to include areas identified as strengths, areas needing improvement. The report should also include action steps to improve crisis response at your institution. Remember, this is the reason why we conduct a tabletop exercise in the first place, to improve your plan and its implementation by the team. Once the report is complete, Schedule a meeting with the exercise participants to review the report and its recommendations. Answer participant questions. Identify the departments or staff responsible for executing the recommendations. Develop a plan with timelines for completing recommendations. Practicing your institution's crisis response plan is critical to providing an effective response in the face of an actual crisis. Hopefully, after watching this tutorial, your crisis response team will take the next step and make tabletop exercises a regular practice at your institution. Be sure to review the additional resources available as part of the Crisis Response Learning Program.